So we have an update and some good news as it relates to the Austrian presidential election. Now, I did a video on this channel a little while back, a few weeks ago, about the May 22nd election, which was more than controversy because of a problem with the absentee ballot counting. And there was a lot of different problems that were going on. Now, to frame it a little bit for you, if you don't know what's going on, there was an election in Austria. The second round, which was the final round, happened on May 22nd. I think the first round was similar to our primary. If I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments below. But the first round was at the primary. The second round was on May 22nd. That's when they elected the president. Now, when the initial results of the ballots that were counted up until that point, it came in, it showed that Norbert Offer, who was like the far right guy over there, he was actually winning. That's what they call him over there. They call him far right, even though he's not really. He's more like a conservative. And maybe even in American standards, he wouldn't really be that strong of a conservative. But he has basic conservative principles that a lot of people in the West are now starting to run on border security, nationalism, basic things that you should have in a country that is any kind of way first world or any kind of way wants to preserve their country. Right. Basic things. Now, for that, he gets called far right. His opponent is like the liberal guy. That's Alexander Vanderbellen. OK, now, when the initial balance, it came in on May 22nd without the mail in votes, Norbert Offer was winning at 51.9 percent. Right. That was his share of the vote. Now, after the absentee ballots, the mail in ballots came in, he ended up losing and Alexander Vanderbellen won at 50.3 percent, 50.3 percent, just barely beat him. Now, there were over 700,000 mail in votes, which was, I think, three times the amount from the previous election in 2010. In Austria, they elect presidents every six years, not the way we do it over here, which is every four. Now, of course, this started all kind of problems because you had Norbert Offer, who was the right wing guy win initially. But then once the absentee slash mail in ballots came in, now all of a sudden a different guy is winning. It changed the whole face of the election. Now, when the actual official results came back, when the breakdown of what votes were casted, where and how and all of the analytics and statistics, there were a lot of obvious irregularities. You had certain principalities showing a turnout that was more than what was possible. I think I saw somewhere where they had like 140 percent turnout, impossible stuff. And it were so many absentee ballots, three times the amount from the previous election. You know, it had to be some fraud going on. I think there were like thirty one thousand votes out of the seven hundred thousand that were instantly labeled as fraudulent and they were cast out. But that does not really account for all of the other ones. There were still a lot of questions going on about the balloting. Now, the Freedom Party, which is Norbert Offer's party, they actually appealed the actual outcome of the election because, hey, this is fraud going on. The Freedom Party says that they have evidence of children voting, of foreign citizens voting, of people that cannot vote, should not vote, and maybe even people that don't exist were voting. A lot of voter fraud. They had evidence of the voter fraud. So they demanded an actual review of the results and they were able to win. Now, the big thing they found in this investigation, I guess it's called an investigation, but the biggest thing they found was in 82 district polling stations, the absentee ballots were already open and sorted into where they were going to go. If they're going to go for Norbert Offer, if they're going to go for Alexander Vanderbellen, or if there was any other way to vote for someone else, they will go there. But that is against what you're supposed to be doing because there is an election committee that comes in and looks over that. So for them to open the ballots before the election committee came, you can't do that. That just screams corruption because it's easy for people to just open up the ballots and then place them wherever they want to place them without any kind of oversight. Right now, I don't know if there's anybody to come in and check to see whose name was on what, if the names can be transfixed or transposed or whatever. But obviously that's a problem right there. And on top of that, you get children that were voting, foreign citizens that were voting. A lot of fraud happened. So there was a two week hearing and Gerhard Holzinger, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. He's the head of the Constitutional Court, said that the challenge brought by the Freedom Party leader Hans Christian Strach against the May 22nd election has been upheld. 
right? So they say, hey, you brought a challenge, you were able to appeal it, now you've won. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna do a do-over, right? They say, hey, we found that the ballots were handled illegally in 94 of the 117 districts. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do it over again. We're gonna have it later in the year, maybe September or October. You may have Vendor Bell and get another chance to run appropriately and win, or you may have no but offer be able to run appropriately and win. Either way, hopefully they'll be able to run appropriately. Now, whatever happens, happens, but hopefully there's no kind of fraud, no impropriety or anything like that going on. Hopefully it'll be able to be a clean race, which is what anybody would want in any kind of Western democracy or any kind of society. Nobody wants to have the election be rigged. Now, from what they say in this article that I'm reading, they say that the president of Austria, that position is not really that important. I think Austria has like a chancellor or something like that as well. That's actually like the big dog. When I did a video about the Goddard base tunnel opening ceremony in Switzerland, which was a ridiculous thing, they had heads of state there. And I think the person from Austria was there, but it was not the president. It may have been a chancellor or some kind of title they had. Now, personally, I don't know what the chancellor does. I don't know the hierarchy of the positions or how their political system really works in full. Maybe it's like the way we have it over here where you have the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the legislative branch that all kind of work in tandem to be able to make laws. And then you got the House of Representatives, you got the Senate, you have all these people that kind of work together, allegedly, to make things happen. And it's not so much on a president, like he's just some all, you no know, omnipotent being like a king or something like that, or a dictator. But maybe the president of Austria is an important position. If nothing else, it's definitely important on an international level. And they're saying that he may be the first air quotes, right wing president elected in Europe. But that's what they're saying. They're saying that it will be historic because he will be the first of his kind, I guess, maybe in modern times or ever. And that is a trend that is existing all across Europe, all across the United States. In my previous video, a lot of you guys gave me a lot of compliments for saying that this will not be the end of no but offer or the right wing movement. And you guys said I was right. And hey, I take the credit for it. You know, I think it was just something that was easy to call just from the outside looking in that this is not going to be the end. There's going to be much more of these movements because of what's going on in the European region with all of the crazy in mass Muslim migration, the influx of third worlders coming to a first world place and damaging the culture, damaging the local economy, damaging the people. Well, all that type of stuff going on and also with the dictatorial European Union and their laws on their citizens and their countries and their leadership of respective countries within the EU. People are saying that they're losing their sovereignty and they're losing their ability to be a nation that has its own rules, its own laws and its own regulations. So I'm definitely sympathetic towards that goal. And I hope that in Austria, you're able to get a correct result come September, October or whenever your new election is. And it doesn't even really matter if it's offer or vendor belling as far as the process goes. Now, of course, I'm a conservative and I'm rooting for Mr. Noble to offer to win. I think he was robbed the first time. Hopefully he'll be able to win now. But my point by saying it doesn't really matter as far as the process is concerned is let's just make the process be fair, right? Let's not have any kind of voter fraud. Let's not have any children, foreign citizens, fake people, you know, having 140 percent turnout in the jurisdiction. Let's not have any of that fraudulent stuff going on. Let's make it be fair and let's let it be an even playing field. Now, if that's going on, then the result, you got to live with it. Now, of course, like I say, I want to have the conservative guy get in office. But if the liberal guy wins fair and square, then so be it. I'm not a sore loser and nobody else should either. So that's all I really got to say. You know, this is a good update. And I think that this is kind of a landmark decision. You know, I pretty much thought that they would just try to bury the results as much as they could and that it would be more of an uphill battle. Maybe like if there's any kind of thing like the midterm or something like that or any kind of other position that is up for election in Austria and also in the European region in general, those will be highly contested based upon what happened to Mr. Norbert Offer. But now we have a chance to actually get him in there this year. And of course, right now, as of today, I'm recording this on July 2nd, 2016. As of right now, Vanderbilt has to step down. 
right? Because essentially they have said that his election was not really valid because of what happened with the voting situation, right? And I think it will be the same thing if Mr. Norbert Offer was again in office and you had all the irregularities and funny things going on with the voting, children voting, 140% turnout, foreign citizens, all that kind of stuff going on. You can't have that in the democratic process. You can't have that even if you're in a third world country. You know, you want to have a fair and open and transparent process. So what do you think? Do you think it was a good outcome? Are you rooting for Norbert Offer or are you rooting for Alexander Vandelbanen? And why? What makes you want to pick one person over the other, right? Do you think that this election was fraudulent from the beginning? Do you think that they will be able to get the election correct the next time that there will be no fraud, right? I hope it will be. And I think that they're going to do as much as they can to make sure it doesn't happen because now you've already admitted that there was some fraud going on. There was some improprieties happening. So now you got to run a very tight ship. You can't allow it to happen again. That would be embarrassing for the country and it'd be slapping the face to the Austrian people and people of Europe. They're looking at this election and they're thinking, okay, I'm in France. I'm in UK. Um, you know, elsewhere. I'm in Eastern Europe. I'm looking at you guys over in Austria as an example of what can happen across the European region. So that's all I got. Whatever your comments are, positive and negative, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.